In this problem, we have a big old polynomial here, and we're being asked to find all the zeros of this polynomial. And we're being told that some of them are, are probably complex zeros. That means they're a numbers made up of uh, part real and part imaginary number. So we're going to see that letter i pop up in our solutions. The way to do this requires a lot of steps. First, we're going to list all the possible rational zeros using the rational zeros theorem. And then we'll test those by plugging them into the function to find an actual zero. We'll convert that actual zero into a, a factor and then divide the function by that factor. The result is going to give us a quadratic equation that we can then use the quadratic formula to solve and find the rest of the zeros. So a lot of work there. Let's, um, let's start here uh, at number one. We'll use this list so we don't get lost on our way. Uh, first of all, let's list all the possible rational zeros with the rational zeros theorem. That theorem says you can take the factors of 7, put them over the factors of 2, so the factors of the constant term over the factors of the leading coefficient, the coefficient of the highest degree term here. And that should give you all the possible zeros. Not that they will all be zeros, but that the possible ones are there. So the factors of 7 are positive and negative 1 and positive and negative 7. And the factors of 2, positive and negative 1, positive negative 2. So that's not too hard. We put these over these. So 1 over 1 is 1. So positive or negative 1 is one of our possible, uh, or two of our possible uh, rational zeros. And we put 1 over 2. We got positive and negative 1 half. And 7 over 1 is 7. So positive and negative 7 are possible zeros. And 7, positive and negative 7 halves as well. OK, now we would test these by plugging positive 1, negative 1, positive 1 half, negative 1 half, all of these values in for x and crunching them out. Uh, I don't really want to do that, get out a calculator and kind of do that by hand. So I've set up a spreadsheet where I've got the, f the formula of the function right in here. Let me zoom in and show you. So here, a1 is this box right here, and that stands in for x. So we'll put in our x values there. So this is 2 times x three times. That's 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 12x plus 7. So that's the equation for our function. So let's go ahead. I put in 1, and I got 18. What I want to see here is 0, because we're looking for the zeros of the function. So we need the value of the function to be 0. Let's put in a negative 1. We're lucky this will be one of the whole numbers. It's not negative 1. Let's put in 7. No. Negative 7. Oh, no. So it must be one of the fractions. When I enter fractions in a spreadsheet like this, I just put the equal sign so I avoid confusing uh, it with date format. So let's put in 1 half. Let's try negative 1 half. Oops. Ah, there we go. So negative 1 half is a 0 of this function. All right. So let's go back. We know that negative 1 half is a 0. We can convert this to a factor. Uh, you know, when we say negative 1 half is a 0, we mean it's a solution for x uh, that makes this function uh, equal to 0. And so we can say x equals 1, negative 1 half. To convert that to a factor, we set this whole thing equal to 0. And I'm going to do that by adding 1 half to both sides. And then we get x plus 1 half equals 0. And then we take this part as our factor. This is what we're going to divide our function by. So let's set up some polynomial division here. x plus 1 half. We're going to divide our polynomial by that. So we'll put the polynomial in here. And we've got 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 12x plus 7. All right, so when we do this polynomial division, we look at this first term. And we want the, the leading terms to always disappear on each round through the division. So we're going to put something up here that if you multiply it by x is going to equal 2x cubed. Well, then that thing would be 2x squared, because 2x squared times x is 2x cubed. But of course, we have this 1 half term, so we have to multiply this by the 1 half as well. So 2x squared times 1 half is just x squared. 
then this thing gets subtracted. So 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, that's 0. That's what we wanted. Perfect. A negative 3x squared minus x squared is negative 4x squared. Hardest part about polynomial division is just keeping the signs straight here. And then once we get this far, we bring down the next term. So I'll bring down our plus 12x. And now we ask ourselves, what do we multiply x by uh, to get a negative 4x squared? And the answer there is negative 4x. So negative 4x times x is negative 4x squared. And negative 4x times 1 half is negative 2x. And then we subtract again, being careful of the signs. So a negative 4x squared minus a negative 4x squared is 0. 12x minus a negative 2x, that's like a positive 2. Then we, that makes a positive 14x. Then we bring down the 7. And we ask ourselves, what do we multiply x by to get 14x? That's 14. So 14 times x is 14x. And 14 times 1 half is 7. Perfect. So when we subtract again, we're going to get 0 there. All right, so our division worked. So x plus 1 half is definitely a factor. This is the resulting quadratic uh, equation that we get, and we can use the quadratic formula to uh, solve for the x's here, uh, solve for the zeros. So uh, the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Let's start with negative b. Our b is negative 4, so a negative b is a positive 4. Then we have our plus or minus, and we have the square root, and this is b squared. Well, negative 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times a, a is 2 here, and c is 14. And all of that goes over to a, which is 2 times 2, or 4. All right, let's see what we can simplify under the radical sign here. 4 times 2 times 14. I'm just going to do the radical sign part. So this is 16 minus um, 112. And what does that give us? So that looks like negative 96. So I can rewrite this as 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 96 all over 4. We definitely want to factor out um, what's underneath the, the radical sign here. Let me just do that over here. Negative 1 is going to be one of my factors. I'm going to pull that out as an i, because the square root of negative 1 is i. And 96. Uh-huh, so that's uh, 2 times 48, and that's 2 times 24, and 24 is 4 times 6. Okay, so maybe it would make most sense if I rewrote the factors as negative 1, and 2 times 2 times 4 is 16. So another way to write... Um, 96 is 16 times 6. Okay, I think that's the best way to write the factors for this. I'm going to pull out the negative 1. I'm going to pull out um, the 16. The, the 16 will become a 4 when we take the square root of it. The negative 1 will become the i, and we'll leave the 6 in there. So I can rewrite this as 4 plus or minus the square, or sorry, 4 times i times the square root of 6 all over 4. And then these 4s are going to cancel, and we'll just get 1. So this equals 1 plus or minus 4i times the square root of 6. And over 1, we don't even have to write that. Now, uh, this is one format to write it in. Some people like to put the i at the end. I find that a little confusing because uh, it, it might get end up getting stuck under the square root symbol when it shouldn't be, so I like to put it at the front, but whichever way your teacher likes it. And then some uh, teachers require you to write these as two separate things rather than having the plus or minus in there. Uh, however they're asking for it, either way is fine. But we have found the roots now. We've got negative 1 half, and we've got 1 plus 4i times the square root of 6, and 1 minus Oh, not 4. I brought that 4 in. Sorry, 1 t plus i times the square root of 6 or 1 minus i times the square root of 6. Whew. Well, that was a lot of work. Uh, that is how to find 
all the zeros of a function like that uh, when some of them are complex zeros.